Imagine water flowing at a constant rate through a pipe. Now imagine that the pipe slowly narrows, which means we have a tapering pipe, where the cross-sectional area of the pipe change along the length of the pipe. Then what happens to a fluid when it flows through the narrow portion of this tapering pipe? Does it slow down or speed up? Does the pressure of the fluid increase because it's being squeezed here? Or does something else happen? This is a classic question in fluid mechanics. And while the answer might seem surprising at first, it's actually a direct outcome of basic physics principles. In order to understand this, first comes the idea of continuity, which just means that whatever fluid goes in must come out. Imagine you're pouring water through a funnel. If the top is wide and the bottom is narrow, but the same amount of water flows through each part every second, then clearly the water at the narrow end has to move faster to keep up with the constant flow rate across the pipe. That's all the continuity principle is saying. If we assume the fluid has the same density everywhere, which is true for most liquids like water, then the mass flow rate is just the cross-sectional area of the pipe multiplied by the velocity of the fluid. So at any two points in the pipe, if the fluid is steady and not leaking anywhere, then the area at point 1 times the velocity at point 1 must be equal to the area at point 2 times the velocity at point 2. If the area becomes smaller, the velocity must become larger to keep the product the same. That's why fluid speeds up in narrower parts of the pipe. Awesome! Now, let's look at pressure. When we ask people what happens to the pressure in the narrow part of the pipe, they say the pressure decreases in the narrow part because of Bernoulli's principle, which is this formula. And because velocity is more at point 2, pressure is less at point 2, that's it. But this kind of response doesn't really explain anything intuitively. It just states the result using a formula without touching on why this happens or what's really going on underneath. This is where energy comes into the picture. Bernoulli's principle, or Bernoulli's equation, is just a way of saying that the total energy of the fluid stays constant as it moves along a streamline. The energy can change form, but the total remains the same. In this case, the energy in the fluid is stored in three ways. Pressure energy, kinetic energy, which comes from speed, and potential energy, which comes from height. If we assume the pipe is flat and there's no change in height, we can ignore potential energy. That leaves pressure and speed. So if the speed increases, the pressure must decrease to keep the total energy the same. That's why in a tapering pipe, pressure goes down while velocity goes up. By the way, this should clear a misunderstanding that many people have about what pressure really means in a moving fluid. What they're really confusing is the kinetic energy of the moving fluid with the static pressure that pushes outward on the pipe walls. The pressure we're talking about here, the one that acts on the cross-sectional area of the pipe walls, is static pressure, and it actually drops in faster regions of flow. This idea helps explain why airplanes fly. The shape of a wing is designed so that air flows faster over the top surface than under the bottom. And because the air on top is moving faster, its static pressure is lower. That means the pressure under the wing is higher than the pressure above. And this difference creates an upward force called lift. So the plane is literally being pushed up by pressure from below, not pulled up by the air above. Finally, let's come back to where all this really comes from, which is Newton's laws. At the heart of it, what we have discussed till now is just Newton's second law, which says force equals mass times acceleration. When the fluid speeds up in the narrowing pipe, that means it's accelerating. That acceleration must be caused by a net force, and the only force acting along the pipe is pressure of the fluid itself. So for the fluid to accelerate, there must be more pressure behind it and less pressure ahead of it. That pressure difference is what causes the acceleration. In other words, 
If you use P equals F over area A, acceleration as F over M, and use the kinematic relation between velocity and acceleration, or this, then you might get a rough idea of how Bernoulli's principle is just Newton's law, written in terms of energy instead of force. Tell me in the comments, which group are you in, Newton or Bernoulli? If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So, good!